Without a doubt, this was the hardest airplane I've ever learned to land. As soon as you straighten out, you are blind. So now I'm going to make my pie slices the same on each side. Exactly right. From the back seat of the pit special, this is all you can see, and this is where the pilot sits. Right, here we go. Takeoff wasn't so bad, but trying to judge the landing with such a twitchy aerobatic airplane was really, really challenging. Very clean. I do. But here's the thing about a piss, it doesn't care how many good landings you've done. It just cares about the next one. So keep your head in the game and we'll try it again. We traveled to the middle of Canada for some awesome training. Okay, so we're putting on a parachute. That's what we do before we fly these things. In the previous episodes from this series, we flew here in the TBM 850. We just literally went to the middle of Canada. Yeah, we crossed half the country. Rode along for Luke's competitive sequence where I nearly broke my neck, and then jumped into my basic aerobatics training. This one is going to be all about approach and landing in this airplane. In a future episode, we'll cover the advanced aerobatics. It's also worth noting that there are literally dozens of tailwheel training episodes already available. That's the foundation I was building on before I faced this thing. I've heard it's very squirrely on the ground. It is not squirrely, it's only the pilot that's okay, squirrely. Okay, cool, so over control is going to be the, yeah, yeah so don't yeah. over control. So I've got a lot of punch and jab training for the rudder, not so much in this That's thing. not what you really want to do in this airplane. If you're at that point in this airplane, you've already kind of let it get away to that point. Do you think this airplane glides well or not well? I would say not well. You are correct. People say that if you want to know what the glide ratio is of fish, you just throw a brick out and follow it. Okay. Just to give you an idea now, we're going to be typically turning about a mile or so final, and we're going to set up at an angle. So we're not going to approach straight on the runway, but we're going to be about a mile final offset, about 30 degrees or so. So at that point, we're going to be about 120 miles per hour, and then we're going to be decelerating to about, about 95, 100 over the numbers. Wow, that's fast. <laughs> yeah. The landings, uh, you know, I'll, I'll guide you, so you might feel me nudging you on the stick a little bit. That does not mean I'm taking control. I will say the words I have control if I'm actually taking control. Okay. So that means, uh, you know, don't resist what I'm doing, and don't let go either. Roger. So basically fly a normal downwind, turn your base, and then you're going to set up about a 30 degree angle to the threshold. I'll coach you along there. And of course, the reason you can't fly straight to the runway is because you can't see what's ahead of you. All you have is this area to the side of the nose to work with. Luke explained it like this. It's keeping the triangle the same, keeping the pie the same. You can see that triangle area. The goal is to fly your approach profile, your speed profile, but more importantly, equally importantly, see the runway. If, you lose, if you're losing sight of the runway, you gotta change something. So if this was your runway here, you're gonna land this way. You know, we, we wouldn't be able to do this unless we did a major slip, which at this stage, I don't really want you doing tons of rudder low to the ground. Some people do it. I wouldn't recommend doing it. I like to stay nice and coordinated as much as possible. And uh, just kind of be aware of your body now and make sure your feet are not on the brakes. Make sure your clothes aren't binding on anything. The last thing you want is something unexpected low to the ground. Right. The more stable your approach is in your arrival to the runway, if you can see it the whole time, it's going to be so much more manageable for you. So gumps, gas hasn't changed. Undercarriage, you can tap the brakes. You're planning touching those here. And for Delta Romeo Yankee, we're looking for a stop uh, taxi back for another takeoff. Delta Romeo Yankee, Roger. Wind 190 at 10, clear to land, runway 1. Delta Romeo Yankee, clear to land, 1. It's important to note that Luke always starts with basic aerobatic training before bringing a student into the circuit. So we'd already done that stuff. Because your stick and rudder is way above average, I, we can get here sooner. Okay. We can get here sooner than I normally would. Yeah, you're doing good here. I'm just going to help you with your angle. But we're looking pretty good so far. B's looking okay. So fast though, right? Yeah, but we can slow down. Just reduce the power, lift the nose. I feel like I want to slip so I keep seeing. Should I or no? No, no, you should, you should be good. Should I don't slip? I can just see it. Like right there, I can just see the runway. I'm good. Still see it. Okay, make sure you're not touching the brakes. You're looking good. Keep flying down. You're looking good. That's the middle there. Level wings. Yeah, power's off. Get a little lower. You're a little bit high. A little lower. So I'm really fighting you, eh? 
Yeah, right oh, there. Oh, that was way higher than I thought, yeah. Yeah, you're okay. Keep it straight here. Check your pie. And just light break into a stop. So yeah, you helped me not round out too high. <laughs> Correct, yeah. That's all I did. I just kind of resisted your, yeah. your, your tendency to pull too much. I just let you come down more. Is that what people tend to do? Absolutely. Because I felt like I was so low. No, you weren't. But now that I see it, I'm sitting on the ground. You are exactly right. Yeah, I mean, your instincts are, I don't want to smash into the ground early, right? Yeah. So I just want to kind of, yeah. right? You're not over-controlling uh, your elevator at all, which is usually what people do, so. Just do what you're doing, but do it lower. It's so hard to do that, man. Yeah. I, I just, I feel like I'm underground here. I know. Feels like your butt is dragging on the ground. Yeah. Probably it's going to happen a few times as you're going to have to overshoot. D that's not a defeat. Yeah. That's a normal part of learning how to fly this kind of an airplane. Right. Because good approaches and good setups are so rewarded, it's worth fighting for those. I feel high, but I'm going to believe it's going to work oh. out. Oh, you're fine. Yeah, don't even worry about that at all. Okay, so there's my angle. Angle looks good. The height looks good. I just maintain this. Just make sure your nose isn't too far to the right. Otherwise, you'll, uh, you'll align yourself too early. Like put the uh, runway right at the edge of my field of view? Yeah. But for me, you're sinking way too much. Okay. Yeah. So I have the power and just... Yeah. Now, can you see it? I can't see it now. So go around? Go around. It's, there's no there's no shame. It's quite the opposite. And to go around. If you weren't happy with your setup and you punch it out of there, I'm happy. Yeah. Or a little bit fast, but not too bad. That's probably too much of a power change. Okay. Yeah. Your speed, just as long as it's creeping towards where you want, that's what we're looking for. Okay. It's all you, man. It's all me. So I like this angle, yeah? I, I like it. it. I like it. I'm not going to change anything until I get closer. You're maybe getting a bit low, though. Really, eh? Okay. The speed is still a little high. Are you okay? We have a headwind today. It is so weird trying to get used to just being able to see that teeny bit of runway there to the left. By the middle. Far to the right, right? Yeah. Power's off. Just hold it. Oh, you're cool. And it's also worth noting that helmet cam can see a lot more than I can because it's higher than my eyes. Jesus, eh? <laughs> Just relax the stick a bit. Yeah. And then back again. You're good. Okay. I feel like that was mostly me. Yeah. Uh, I didn't feel like I was flaring too high on that one. No, you weren't. Much better. The idea with coming in with a bit more speed is, especially you as a new pits pilot, it's going to take you more time to get situated, right? It's going to take you a little more time to figure out, okay, where, where is zero drift in the flare? Where's my flare height? And of course, I'll be coaching you through that, but uh, bottom line, it's going to give you more time. Steve, that's like 96% you. Awesome. I mean, it wasn't pretty, but it wasn't horrible. No, it was safe. But now what you need to work on is efficiency to get to and keep center line yeah but you did a little bit of extra diddling to get there which is totally fine totally normal part of the process but you know now that you're getting better you know you can refine things yeah i knew that i was too far to the right exactly so, so the, the fact that you know that that's worth so much you know like where i base this airplane in steinbeck you know the runway is 25 feet wide of usable pavement so you know you go from what we're using here which is 75 feet wide which still gives you a decent slice of pie but you know, I'm dealing with low calorie uh, pie slices over there, so. <laughs> I had a smaller pie slice, but yeah. I just sort of lived with it and fixed it. Yeah. I think we've done maybe a half dozen circuits already, and I think the progress is starting to show. So a couple of things I want you to keep in mind for, for today's flights. So this white strip will represent the center line of our 75 foot wide runway. So what's tend to happen a few times is, like imagine this is, this is the threshold. Yeah. You've been moving your aim point too far back. Okay. So what's happening is because you're aiming here, you're starting your alignment turn here. And as soon as you do that, it's gone. It's gone. So I don't get my pie slices. So aim here. And then that way, as you're doing that turn, the one with the threshold goes underneath you. And that way you never lose sight. Never lose sight. Yeah. Once you can do that part consistently, like you've been doing a great job with the actual flaring like you're a natural tailwheel pilot, so, so that part's good. It's just getting yourself positioned consistently. So that's gonna be the key today, I think. Yeah. In variable 170, and gusting 15, clear to land runway 18. Southern Home Yankee, nose more to the left, you're gonna lose the runway. Yeah, slow down a bit, power back, nose up a bit. I still see it, not good. Okay, 
so I still see it and I'm lining up. Okay, power is off. Yeah, cut it. I'm too far to the right, huh? You're okay. I really felt like I had this one perfect and it turned out to be almost a greaser of a touchdown, but during the roll things got a little crazy and I wasn't sure what was going on, but I guess it really was about the bumpy runway. Yeah, there's really sometimes you can't win. Okay. Like honestly, this, this runway is a bit bumpy, so... Yeah, I felt pretty good about that one. Yeah, I felt good. So if I maintain a stable 100 short final like that, like... Like well, the thing is, I, w I wouldn't fly any great deal of the approach at that speed. I would, you know, I would be a 120 at at a mile back, you know, and then 110 half mile, 105 short, and then 100 at the fence. Okay. It's a progressive reduction, so you're always looking for that trend, trend in the airspeed. I'm never looking for a stable speed, like one speed. Okay. I just want to see it creeping back towards my target. The more on speed you can be in the pocket, the less tempted you are going to be to touch down prematurely, which is going to cause you all sorts of grief, so. so just try to get the airspeed moving back in the direction you want a bit more. Try not to have the airspeed stagnant like that. Okay. Like if it's, you know, 110 for 10 seconds, that's that's not right. It would be trending backwards. But yeah, you're flaring, that's all good. You know, like you've been doing real good alignment turns. Let's, let's work on the consistency with those. And with the conditions today being a little bit of a left crosswind, let's keep that in mind. Um, but you know, generally you've been doing a great job of being you know, longitudinally aware in the flare. You keep the plane nice and straight. You know, to be honest, a lot of people, as your amount of time in the plane, they can't even keep the plane straight with zero wind. So you're, you're doing a great job you know, in these conditions so far. I think we can, we can build on what you've done and finish strong today. And also, if you want to fly the plane a little bit more snappy in the circuit, you, know, you can roll out like that. Okay. And, you know, just bang right into it. Okay, sure, yeah. Fly the plane like it's meant to be flown. That's cool, yeah. yeah. Exactly, yeah. Make it do what you want to do. So engine failure right now, where do you think you're going? Uh, I'm going to probably land on the crosswind runway. Okay, I'm just going to pause it here just for the sake of context. This is the runway layout of this airport, and there's the uh, threshold for 1.8 at the top there. Uh, you couldn't make it to 1.8, uh, I would agree with that. Can I make it to 2.2? Uh, yeah, 2.2 you could do, that'd be probably the best. Yeah. I cut out a bunch of ATC comms where we were dealing with some spacing issues due to traffic. But there's a full uncut version of this training available for Patreon supporters. It's not going to really work for us, is it? He's probably going to make us extend. Yeah, so it's not going to work what we want. We can, uh, I can ask, can we do a 360 here? Delta Romeo Yankee, can we do a left 360 to reposition? Delta Romeo Yankee, power continue downwind. Okay, we'll stay on downwind. Oh well. Delta Romeo Yankee, power turn base number one. In the base turn, Delta Romeo Yankee. Yeah, that's the way to turn. Yeah, this is looking good. And then just power back to get the airspeed trending back a bit more. Drop fine. So a good idea is be aware of your runway environment and know where the reference points are. So the, the easy thing here at St. Andrews is the middle taxiway, Echo. Right. So if you see that whizzing by and you're still... Land. Get out of there. Yeah. yeah, this is looking cool. So what I have been finding that when it worked a few times is like if I get down, I do a quick check of both sides. Have both yes, exactly. So side. as you're doing your alignment turn, going to level, check. And then it should be good. And then I just aim on left after yeah. that. Yeah, I'll just stay All on the left. All my scanning is on the left pie. Yeah. So for this one, I'm obviously looking over the right side during the approach, and then I switch quickly to the left side after lining up. And then start your alignment turn about here. Nice and shallow. Left turn, yep. That is a bit late. I'm on the left now. Just hold it. Yeah, the crosswind is drifting us. I was really proud of this crosswind landing, but while finessing it, Taxiway Echo definitely whizzed by. Because I remember that whizzing by, I think we had just touched down, it was at that hard part when I was trying to judge the roll, and then that went by, and then yeah. my, my pie slice all changed. Yeah. Yeah, it wants to ground loop. Yeah, I got it. You got it. Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy yeah, tailwheel. I'm, I'm like exploring the right rudder here. Wind. You can see how much runway we use there, eh? Oh, yeah. And Delta Romeo Yankee, you looking for the backtrack? Delta Romeo Yankee, power backtrack to the proof. Romeo Yankee. Sorry, I don't want to pivot on my tire there. Don't turn on a dime, just have a nice little radius in your turn. Yep. Yeah. Oh. That's a lot of runway. Here we did, yep. If you are hot like that and you do have the runway to 
leave the speed, then just keep holding it, holding it, holding it. You want to be in this attitude. Even slightly more nose up than this is okay. The manual says you can touch down tail first in this plane, slightly first. I know what you mean about it was late to line up. Yeah. But I didn't feel like I ever lost sight or... Uh... No, no, it wasn't for that reason. It just makes the turn less dramatic. Okay. Like, the more you can kind of feather that turn in, kind of curve it in, the shallower, like, the less bank angle you need. So it just, it just serves for a less dramatic, you know, arrival to the flare. Right. Because the way you did it, it's a bit more of a dramatic thing, and the tendency to undershoot or overshoot is increased, so... And then, yeah, there's definitely a noticeable left cross with that, so that's adding to the difficulty. But, yeah, the fundamentals are there, so... I say, well, we do one more or something on one three and... Yeah, I got one more in me, I think. Call it a day? Okay, I have control. You got Runway it. Runway one three is now active wind, variable one four zero eleven, gusting 17. Cleared right downwind, runway one three. And again, for this last one, we had to deal with a whole bunch of traffic and stuff, so I've trimmed that down. But at least this happened on the last one, after I had the basics sort of figured out. You didn't think you'd get to log so much cross-country time. Next right ground, taxi ahead, golf, hold short, runway 36. I don't see that traffic to you. Oh, there he is. Oh, yeah, okay. That's the reason we couldn't do our left-hander. Okay. And the reason we're extending again. Yeah, oh well. So after being vectored away, we had to come back and try to refigure out our final approach. So fly like this until I feel like I need to turn left. Yeah, exactly. From your Yankee Tower, wind one four zero at six, cleared to land runway one three. South of Yankee. And just keep a bit of power now that you got the speed pretty well nailed. Play with the power as you need to, just to keep it consistent. Max ray ground. I'd be a bit more nose to the right. You don't want to line up prematurely. Yeah, keep turning right. Cross three six off the road. That's about as much as I can go before I lose sight. A little bit more nose down. Yeah, you're all right. Keep it turning oh, right. right to I need to line up there. I still see it. Now power off. Yeah, you're okay. Just hold it. Hold it. Keep it back. Look at that. No drama. Ah! It ain't over yet. It ain't over yet, you're right. Alright, well that was awesome. That was your best one, man! Alright, thank you. It was a weird circuit. It was weird, yeah. I mean, that's the name of the game in this thing. With traffic, you can't always get your ideal situation. So you gotta make up for it, which is what you did. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a workout. That's why I like this approach style, because it, it's flexible. You can modify it to, to suit the traffic needs. So I hope you enjoyed that one. This was probably one of the most fun training things I've ever done. Huge thanks to Luke. You can show him some love over at harvzair.com. And huge thanks to Patreon supporters and sponsors for helping us produce this content. A lot of work goes into this stuff. And please visit flightchops.com for the back catalog and to join our mailing list and keep your flight chops sharp. How good you're flying and how safe you are and how much you're getting it is, I have a meter that's built into my head. It's, it's how many beads of sweat are going down my face. <laughs> That determines your competency level. So right now I have no beads. Awesome. <laughs> Zero beads. Zero beads.